Back in the 90s, early 2000s, many people on the conservative side of the political aisle, they looked at Bill Maher like he was political public enemy number one. Back then, conservatives, they were known to be highly religious. Bill Maher, an avid atheist, he thinks religion is destructive and dangerous. The far right back then, they were anti-gambling, anti-weed, anti-prostitution, anti-fun. Bill Maher wanted all of it legalized. He supports federally funded health care, similar to what they have up in Canada. Pretty sure Bill Maher also supports abortion, which back in the 90s, early 2000s, if you were a conservative, if you were religious, anyone who supported abortion, they were essentially looked at like an enemy of the state. I can remember when I was growing up. Churches, they would organize these abortion rallies. They would stand at the intersection of busy streets every Sunday afternoon protesting against a woman's right to choose. Now, before signing with HBO in 2003, Bill Maher hosted a show called Politically Incorrect on ABC. The show was popular, often drew big ratings. Six days after 9-11, Bill Maher claimed America had been cowardly in the past by shooting missiles from 2,000 miles away. He claimed that flying an airplane into the World Trade Center was the exact opposite of being a coward. Now, these comments were made during a highly sensitive time in the country, especially when it pertained to the military. The backlash against Bill Maher was so severe, numerous sponsors pulled their ads from the show. ABC, they ended up canceling Politically Incorrect a few months later. Bill Maher was canceled before it was mainstream to be canceled. He was often criticized on Fox News conservative talk radio. Hell, during the Donald Trump administration, a lot of Republicans, they could not stand Bill Maher. But it's funny how a common enemy can bring former political enemies together. Bill Maher, he is a real liberal, a classic liberal. You see, 20 years ago, You could disagree on policy issues, but still manage to find common ground. Bill Maher is a supporter of the Second Amendment. I think most of you guys watching the channel can agree with him on that. He is against illegal immigration. I know all of you are on the same page with him there. The divisiveness, the political divisiveness 20 years ago, it was strictly political. Today, the divisiveness is by design. We are no longer disagreeing about political issues where we can find common ground through discourse or debates. There is no common ground to be found when it comes to the shit fucks. These are fundamental disagreements on morality, common sense. Five years ago, if I told you Bill Maher would no longer be public enemy in conservative media, but would be public enemy number one in the community of wanker spankers, none of you would have believed me. Last week, CNN announced they would be airing the overtime segment of Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. Now, this announcement was met with fake outrage from shit fucks on woke Twitter. This is outrageous! This man is a confirmed mythical racist. Six years ago, he used the N-word on national television. I also hear he's a biological male who likes to sleep with biological women. This is no bueno. Bill Maher should be more like us and desire the inflatable donkey. Like the rest of us, Bill Maher has had enough of the shit fucks. He's tired of 21-year-old non-binary Newton, who thinks the bed identifies as a toilet, telling him that Rachel Levine is a beautiful woman. He's tired of worshippers of the oak tree telling him Los Angeles will spontaneously combust if a cow farts in the wind in Montana. Last night, Bill Maher went on another tirade against the woke movement. I think I've told you guys before, many of the tactics that we're seeing being used by the woke movement in America today come straight from the woke Bible, Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky. Now, who influenced Saul Alinsky? Chairman Mao. Most of these tactics we're seeing today originated in China. Back in the 1950s and 1960s, Mao convinced the Chinese youth to turn against their parents. Just like we're seeing today, He used public schools to indoctrinate children. He confused them at a young age. Left is right, right is left. The sky's not really blue, it identifies as green. Your parents are old-fashioned, their values are evil. 
Listen to Bill Maher explain it. Roll the film. Lincoln once said that you can repeal all past history, but you still cannot repeal human nature. But he's canceled now, so fuck him. <laughs> Yesterday, I asked ChatGPT, are there any similarities between today's woke revolution and Chairman Mao's cultural revolution of the 1960s? And it wrote back, how long do you have? <laughs> Because, again, in China, we saw how a revolutionary thought he could do a page one rewrite of humans. Mao ordered his citizens to throw off the four olds, old thinking, old culture, old customs, and old habits. So um, your whole life went in the garbage overnight, no biggie. And those who resisted were attacked by an army of purifiers called the Red Guard, who went around the country putting dunce caps on people. Yeah, who didn't take to being a new kind of mortal being. A lot of pointing and shaming went on. Oh, and about a million dead. And the only way to survive was to plead insanity for the crime of being insufficiently radical, then apologize and thank the state for the chance to see what a piece of shit you are. And of course, submit to re-education, or as we call it here in America, freshman orientation. Is that not exactly what is happening in America today? They're erasing history. They're telling us we have to change our values. 15 years ago, Michelle Obama famously said, we have to change our traditions. We have to move into a different place. They pulled her from the campaign trail immediately because they knew the country back then wasn't ready for radical change, but they are no longer hiding their agenda. They are telling you exactly what they want to do. The movement in China demonized anybody who disagreed. You saw it in the clip. They publicly labeled them, children rounding up their parents, humiliating them in public because they refused to acclimate to these new traditions. Millions of them eventually lost their lives, all because they didn't agree with the propaganda. The same thing is happening in America today. Instead of it happening in person, it happens on social media. This week, Clay Travis was attacked for saying the WNBA sucks. Grown men on Twitter who can't even define a fucking woman. They could not differentiate between a naked woman and a peeled Don Lemon. These grown men on Twitter accusing Clay Travis of mythical misogyny because he told the truth about the WNBA dump. Anytime someone speaks the truth, they are demonized, they're discredited because the truth is the only medicine that can eradicate the woke fungus. If Mao didn't have his dissenters killed, he put them in re-education camps. Like Bill Maher said, we have the same thing here in America. It's called college or sensitivity training. Not too long ago, a professor at the University of Illinois, Chicago was accused by his students of violating the woke commandments. This was a heavy accusation because he violated the most important commandment, the first commandment, thou shalt not commit mythical racism. Now, how did he violate this first commandment? Perhaps in a moment of anger, he called one of his students a racial slur. No, had that happened, I doubt he's still breathing. Maybe he said the word Wuhan when talking about the Covey. I mean, he's not that stupid. The punishment for that crime is 30 days of Fauci fucking. Even the wanker spankers are no longer aroused by the lizard. During an exam in a corporate law class, he laid out this hypothetical scenario. A black employee was suing her former employer for racial discrimination. She accused the company of calling her two racial slurs. Now, going into this exam, this professor knew how easily triggered his students could be. During class one day, a student saw a flash of lightning out the window, had a panic attack, thinking the KKK was coming to get her. One student, witnessed maintenance trimming back an oak tree and protested during class by visibly fertilizing his acorns. With this professor knowing his class was full of easily triggered shit fucks, he didn't type out the full racial slurs on the exam. He just used the first letter of each one. This is mythical racism! How dare this old white man teach us about racism! 
The professor was trying to help them, trying to teach them, laying out a hypothetical situation of real racism that could happen in the real world. You know, the real world, the world the rest of us are living in while the shit fucks live in this virtual utopia. The students went to the school administration demanding the professor be fired. Now, if you were on this administration, how would you have handled this? I know how I would have handled it. Hey, kids, this is not woke you. This is fuck you. Get the hell out of my office. You think that's how the board of the University of Illinois Chicago handled this situation? <laughs> they banned this professor from campus, placed him on indefinite administrative leave. They forced him to sit through eight weeks of sensitivity training. What did he learn in sensitivity training? Racial slurs of any kind are prohibited. Matter of fact, you are no longer allowed to use the word Indian or Native American. You must describe them as birthing persons who inhabited this land before the white man infected it with mythical racism. There have been reports on some of these woke U campuses across the country that students are trying to get professors fired because the class is too difficult. What the hell's going on here? I heard a stat the other day. 40% of people under the age of 30 are still living at home with mommy and daddy. I can't afford to live on my own. Rent is far too expensive. Groceries are too high. If I move out, I'll no longer have time to play spank my wanker with my friends. These are the same people fighting in the streets for abortion rights or fighting against fake racism. They have time to protest, but they don't have time to get a job nor do they have the skills to get a job. When Mao had full control over China, you know one of the first groups he turned against? The youth, the same activists that helped him take over, happens every time in a tyrannical government. If this same thing were to happen here in America, the first group a tyrannical regime would take out would be the woke movement. Once they no longer serve a purpose, they're expendable. This is not a political debate. We are no longer disagreeing about policy. Issues like abortion, health care, none of that matters right now. The fungus is trying to destroy the foundation of this country. I think we've already lost a generation, and most of the time, it only takes one lost generation for change to be implemented. We have a generation that can't figure out something as simple as gender. We have a generation that is easily manipulated and easily controlled, begging for more government control, begging for the government to take care of them. But give me your thoughts. Bill Maher once again destroys the woke movement. Are, are we starting to see a shift, a decline of acceptance? Sean Penn is as liberal as they come. This week, even Sean Penn criticized the woke movement. We are starting to see more and more people on the far left speaking out against the woke shit fucks. Is the woke movement dying in America? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.